what's going on, guys? Today we're talking about the best uh, decks from over the weekend, or some of the best decks from over the weekend. I know we don't usually look at the most, most, most meta, um, but I actually heard M. Cole 40 talk about it. It's been kind of tough. We haven't done this in a while because it's been kind of tough to find uh, deck profiles. That's fine, though. I mean, there's a bunch of them all over uh, the internet. Uh, this was from the Boca Raton uh, Regional from June 10th, so just over the weekend. I believe this was uh, 300, 2 to 300 person regional, so not terrible. Anything over 100, that's when I start to take the uh, results seriously. Um, I mean, just to be honest, just to be fair, like, I know you can get good results from like a 15, 16 person tournament or even 40 person tournament. But um, I don't really start taking the results seriously until they get over 100. But um, this was piloted by Lars B. Uh, this article itself, I would assume, would be written by Ren Ren. Uh, but they don't give credit to the uh, writer anymore of the article. But anyway, this was the first place deck list. It was Kashtira. Um, you should probably know what a Kashtira deck looks at this point. Uh, it, from my looking at this, it does look like... Uh, Tier Elements Cash Tira is just in here um, instead of the third unicorn, which uh, felt fairly obvious, or maybe it was Ogre, you know, depending on what deck you're running. Main deck Harpy's Feather Duster is pretty spicy, um, but you know, a lot of people think Labyrinth is the best deck. It's not, but a lot of people think Labyrinth is the best deck. A lot of people, you know, are playtesting these back row heavy decks. Enemy Controller is very interesting. Um, Enemy controller is very interesting. I'm trying to think why to run enemy controller, but enemy controller has been a card that has. I mean, it's at one in dual links. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it has been a card that uh, consistently makes its way in and out of formats because of how good the card actually is. Um, Want to rise heart? You hate to see it. We are running the Lean Garibo, uh, Infantrack Goliath. I guess. I, I guess. <laughs> uh, one of the Don. Uh, the rest of the extra deck looks fine. I don't know what's going on with this card either. This is this right? This can't be right. <laughs> this, this cannot be right. <laughs> Everything else looks fine. Everything else looks accurate. This is actually a really good card. Um, for those who don't know what it does, um, this is another one that's running rampant right now in Duel Links. Um, Zeus is Zeus. We know the extra deck looks pretty solid other than whatever the heck is going on with this. And Infotrack Goliath, I kind of understand. I don't understand. How do you make this card? Why? This has to be wrong. This is, I, I can't. Because there's just no fossil fusion. <laughs> is it a Ghost Reaper target? I don't know. Anyway, for the side deck, three Ghost Bell, three Droll, three Cosmics, three Dark Ruler, no Mores, three Judgments. I love the side deck. Side and Judgment, when you know you're going first. Probably would take out maybe, um, Maybe not Econs. Maybe the Ashes. Maybe D-Shift. I would keep D-Shift. Or maybe you just take out, like, one Birth, one Theosis, uh, and one Talents. Something to that effect. Um, I don't know. I like keeping in Talents going first, though. Talents is actually really good going first or second. It's just a really good card in general. Um, because, you know, your opponent can... Obviously, obviously going second is really good because you're trying to do your plays. Your opponent activates a monster effect. You can just take it. Um, but also, like, going first... When you know you're going first, that means the opposite's true, which means your opponent knows they're going second, which means they might have more hand traps. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to dive too deep into Cash Tira. It's Cash Tira. Like, we get it. It's a good deck. Best deck in the room. Uh, Brandon Despi is also really good. This was also the first place deck list. This was piloted by Jack Kokoran. We're going to go with Kokoran. Um... This was the winner of the uh, Philadelphia uh, Regional, which did have around 700 people. So that's like a legit pretty big regional. Um, so that's pretty, pretty solid. So shout out to Jack. Here uh, is the deck list. Uh, we are seeing the Fright for... I don't want to like this. I'm going to do this very similar to the Cash Tira deck profile, where I just assume you guys know what a branded Despia deck is profile looks like at this point i really just want to talk about like the different ratios and what's unique about it like we do see um bestial labellion is in here that's pretty standard at this point now um blazing cartesia just made this deck really consistent again we do see spring ants kit uh has made its way into here 
Um, it's honestly a really fantastic card. I'm surprised more people don't run Spring Ants kit. We do see the patchwork package in here to an extent where we see just two chain and two patchwork. I actually really like that ratio. And we do see, by the way, I mean, these are some three cool uh, one-offs. You can use Gold Sark uh, to hit a few different cards, actually. Um, Gold Sark's really good. As is Foolish Burial, as is Called By. But the triple evenly matched. Jeez, that's pretty crazy. And that's probably a very big contributing factor. I will say when it comes to evenly matched, uh, the card has grown on me. I have never. I don't love skipping your battle phase. I don't love giving your opponent a free turn. I understand you evenly match, board wipe, make a board. Your opponent can't break it. It's it's essentially like flipping the die roll back. If that makes sense. Like let's say you lose the die roll, your opponent makes this crazy opening board. You play evenly match to break the board. Uh, then you make it your own board. If your opponent still has like four or five cards that they can combo with. They're just going to remake the board. And it's just like they have to break your board instead of breaking your board. Uh, or you breaking their board. And I understand, like, flipping the die roll could honestly be the difference between winning and losing. Um, I'm very curious to see if this person lost any duel. Like, I don't remember seeing their record. I don't think they lost, though. I don't think they lost at all. And the thing is, with evenly match, very few people are going to expect Branded to be running it. And, like, there are no hand traps. So this is just pure gas... One called by and three evenly matched. That's what this is. And that's that's a very great style of deck building. I think a lot of people are kind of, they're so just addicted. And we even saw the last deck. I mean, the last deck was running nine hand traps, three D shifter, three ash, three imperm. People have just gotten so addicted to just like hand trap, hand trap, hand trap, hand trap, hand trap, hand trap, hand trap. And there are decks that can do that. But then there are some decks that can actually be very, very good without the use of hand traps. Um, the extra deck is pretty standard. Um, I have nothing to say here. Pretty standard uh, extra deck. Uh, but with something I will notice, will mention, because I've mentioned this card before when I talk about what cards need to get banned, but it's actually just not even here, is Super Polarization. I feel like uh, this card, uh, Kur Kara Divin Karn if I said that right, which I did not, uh, I feel like that card's in here instead of Super Polymerization. Because um, there are a lot of very generic Super Polymerization targets. Um, maybe they just don't like the discard. I'm not sure. Um, some of the Bistial stuff. You know how Bistial works. Just absolutely hating back row. Which I find to be very uh, interesting. Um, because evenly matched is actually really good against back row heavy decks um like if your opponent sets five and passes and you just activate evenly match unless one of their sets was judgment like they're kind of in a very tough spot because a lot of back row heavy decks need to activate their trap cards or their spell cards to gain advantage and so when you evenly match them like that you have to force them to use them early or they just lose them entirely uh droll is one of the best hand traps in the format i think this this if you're gonna go to a big event you have to have even if you're gonna go to a small one like you should have this in your side deck it's it's really 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 good against some decks it's not that great against um, all decks though finally um this is from a different website this is on um Yu -Gi -Oh! top decks but this was also a region that took place over the weekend this was actually a 31st um place deck profile it was like melfi sprite shenanigans um three ash three drolls one nightmare corruptor ibli uh one div incarnate in the main one caddy one penny just two angler uh with three beaver i think that's pretty standard actually three blue one carrot three jet two red that's also pretty standard sometimes people run one red something to keep in mind uh three books it's pretty interesting. Three Pot of Prosperity. One Call by the Grave. Uh, one Gamma Burst. Um, that the, what is this? All Rank. Um, all Level Rank. Link. Two Monsters you currently control against 14. During your main phase, you banish this card from your graveyard. Target one. It gains 14. So it's just an attack boost. I mean, it's, it's a quick play that can be activated during the damage step. It's not the worst. Um, it's interesting is all I'm going to say uh, double starter because it's at 2 uh, 3 imperm 1 double cross um, Zeus downer gigantic arc light um, Cerebus phoenix 
um, Melfi, uh, Melis, number two, Ninja Shadow, uh, Soul Sweeper, Sprint, Goddess. I'm sorry, I was so off. What? <laughs> I'm trying to think of how this is made. One of these are a tuner. Is this a tuner? No, it's not a tuner. The Melfis are twos, though. Is Angler a tuner? I mean, Ash is a tuner. But Ash, was, Ash plus a sprite card is five. Okay, I'm 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 smart enough. I can figure this out. This is in fact a tuner. Okay, <laughs> uh, is Caddy also a tuner? No, Caddy is not a tuner. So there's one tuner in the deck. So I guess if you can, that's kind of what that is. It's like if you can make it, it is an Omni Negation slash Macrocosmos. Another Kur uh, Kurakara uh, Div Incarnate, uh, two Nibs, three Cosmic, three Dark Rulers, one Harpies. Three anti spell fragrances and three mystic minds for level six or higher special summoned monsters, which is what this card is. Um, essentially, <laughs> essentially, it's like a fair mystic mind. Uh, anti spell fragrance is really good. This is a card that you should be aware of, like, you should be aware that like anti spell fragrance exists. Um, just so you have the outs for it, like a cosmic or a mystical space typhoon, um, because you know your opponent flips this up. If you don't have the quick play to destroy this, or if you don't have the way to get out of this or play around it, you might just lose because it is still an auto win button. Um, but very interesting deck profile. We see uh, Ibly making its appearance, which I actually was the main thing that drew me to this deck profile. Uh, 31st is pretty cool. It is a sprite deck, though, at the end of the day. But let me know what you guys think. What are some of the best decks that you have been noticing from around the format? Let me know in those comments down below. Make sure you guys click that like button. Show your support for the channel. Subscribe if you want more content. Most importantly of all, have a good day.